Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, we're all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Citadel with me, Grand Master Stitch, where we're carrying on with our house a day playing through yet again. At the end of the last episode, we are at war with the Martells to try and take the wide way and the great desert away from them and bring it into Dane territory, giving us a stronghold over the marches. And it didn't get off to the best start, but thankfully they are at war with the Ironwoods as well. So we've managed to use that to our advantage, thankfully. So that we have now managed to get ourselves in a winning position. As you can see, we're at 29%. So hopefully we'll be able to win that war in this episode. King Vorian is getting a little bit old now. We are at the age of 52. Um, yes, the Martells made the tragic mistake of... There was it 99% or 97% something like that with the Ironwoods. And then they decided to come west and attack us instead of finishing off the Ironwoods. And that has now worked horribly for them. And now I think they're actually losing both wars. But here we are with our army of 5,100 men. We need, for some reason, we've lost our commanders. Let's get Tristane in there, our son. And we'll go for Elias as well. Even though he's our rival, we'll get Lord Dusk in there. And we're currently marching on to Hellhole, but I've just noticed that there is a great Martell host here. Do they have any advantages if we march no they actually don't so we're going to march on to that army there of 3200 and we'll make sure we slaughter hopefully slaughter that army we do have the red watch um and the dondarian army here so maybe they'll come and aid us but who knows you never know you know how the ai is they can be absolutely retarded sometimes right kyle dane that was our nephew wasn't it he needs a focus okay wow he's got pretty good stewardship so let's go for the stewardship education for him Who's his guardian? Our master of coin. Yep, perfect. Thank you for all the recommendations for some of the uh, names for the new houses that we're probably going to uh, get added once we take this land. We'll be putting some of those in place. And thank you for answering the question of the day as well for the last video, which was like people with cool nicknames. We had some great answers such as the Red Kraken, the Lightning Lord. So yeah, there's a hell of a lot of great nicknames in this series. Right, how long is it going to take us? Here we go. We've marched on. Okay, why have we... Okay, in the chaos of the surrounding battle, the Scorch, my men cornered Prince Moors of Dawn, who was dominating the battlefield right up until he met his unfortunate hand. Good riddance. But how come we're suddenly getting absolutely slaughtered in this when our army was actually in a decent position before we marched? Why have we come here in, like, ridiculously bad morale? Which is going to make us end up losing the war. That is very annoying. Well, not the war, but that battle. Your Grace, after much talk, the most devout have finally selected a new High Septon. His High Holiness has renounced any worldly name, as he is no longer a man, but an avatar of the gods themselves. May his reign be blessed. That is uh, very frustrating, though, what has just happened. Have we got any more men to call upon? No, we haven't. We've still got a hell of a lot of coin that we did um, manage to save up whilst we were waiting for our claim. So that's good. Got a lot of money to spend. Once we get the wars out of the way, we've still got a bigger army than the Martel, so it's not the end of the world. We've got the Peak Army here, which is almost 4,000. We've got 2,500 men here from Red Watch. The Ironwoods are not our allies, but they are the enemy of our enemy. Uh, there's some more Swan Army coming down. We've got the Red Wind Army, which I'm not sure what they're doing, if I'm honest. And we've got a dangerous faction just popped up. Dispose of King Vorian. Elias. Oh, our own Bannerman. Right, well, that is worrying. 1,200 men. Well, that's annoying. Um, if we try and imprison him, we only have a 32% chance of that being successful. What else could we do? Plot to kidnap, plot to incite revolt. Mm. We're currently going for a claim, so I don't really want to uh, call back my Master of Laws to improve things there. But we will... Um, Send our um, spy over to High Hermitage so that we can hopefully try and stop him a little bit. But hope once we get the war out of the way, we'll be able to try and imprison him and we'll have more than enough manpower to bring him down. Okay, Princess Melander of Dawn accepted King Yorick the sixth of Red March's peace. Let's have a look at you, Princess Melanda of Dawn. Okay, you're married to Yandoros. Okay, so a Roynish person. So you're Nymeria's daughter. Your region is Dowager Queen Nymeria. So Nymeria's still kicking around. Okay. 
Right. Let's just let ourselves march away to wherever we're marching. That Martel host is now going to crush that Swan Army, which is not good. We are still at 23% though. Okay, Vori and Dane, your reign of misrule must come to an end immediately. Me and my allies insist that you abdicate in favour of your heir, Prince Tristane. Be reasonable and let us not resort to bloodshed. I will not be blackmailed, Sir Elias, so raise your flags. Raise your banners in rebellions, I'm sure you're about to do, and we'll bring you down. There we go, he's got 1,200 men, but we'll call in our allies. He's got no chance. If we get all of these guys to come, the peak army's right there. They could literally march on them um, onto Lord Elias and bring him down to himself. It would be, probably be good to get rid of Sir Elias. Even though he is a great commander, his son and heir is actually our friend. So we'll be much better off having him. Uh, at least then we'll have a loyal neighbour to the north of Starfall. Of course, I will honor my obligation. So the Red Winds are getting involved. Who are we about to go to war with here? The Swans are only just losing. So it's a shame that we are... Uh, can't get there to help them out. But it looks like ah, it looks like the Peaks may be about to fight. And the Peaks are going to help us here. And so are the Dondarians. And so are the Swans. Perfect. Managed to create some great alliances. Large bands of rebels and opportunists are flocking to the banner of the faithless traitor, Sir Elias. Oh, brilliant. It's ranked his, uh, made his ranks a bit bigger, but he's still only 1,500 men. We've still got 2,000 more men. Where's that peak army going? I think I may follow them back eastward to the Great Desert, as it looks like that's where they're going. Sir Elias has sent his um, sycophants to the torment me once more, spreading vile rumours about me. Everybody at court is whispering about how despicable and resentful I am. I will not tolerate this offence. Challenge Elias to a duel. Let's have a look at him. He's got 20 combat skill. We've got 100. Yes, I will not tolerate. Let's, let's challenge him to a duel. See if he dares to accept against the Sword of the Morning. If he's in his right mind, he won't, but hopefully he will because we should win that fairly easy. At least then we can get rid of him. Still marching eastward. There we go. We're now in sandstone, which... Okay, where is this peak army going? It's marching back towards us now. Okay, interesting. How many men do the Dornish now have? Maybe now that the king of uh, Dorn has died, they'll lose a lot. Yeah, they've only got 2.8k men. Betrothed can marry... Lucatine Peak and Princess Janella. Yes, send. Let's get that marriage out of the way so we can keep that alliance nice and strong. Right, they're going to siege Starfall. You wisdom mess leisure. I accept the suggestion. Here come the Redwin army as well, which is perfect. Uh, an agreement has been reached. Um, we'll offer the customary amount of gold, 100 gold for now, so that we can keep plenty of money for once we get this war out of the way. Right, they're marching on to the elbow by the looks of it. Lord Dusk. So, yeah, let's march on. We've got 7,000 men. Let's just take him down quickly and get rid of this rebellion as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Where is that Redwin army going? Please do not go and attack. Then again, you might be able to take on that armor, but Queen Nymeria is leading it, which is a warrior. She's a pretty decent commander, as we well know. Uh, your king, your grace king, Gorion Langwood Hall. Uh, no, we're not getting involved. You're not one of our allies, so there's no need for us to. Let's get another commander in here. Let's go for, let's go for Stefan. Sir Stephron, siege leader. Okay, the Swan army's coming this way. So the Redwin army must be about to attack the Martels then. There we go. A very, very easy victory against Sir Elias and his army. We should slaughter that army, which will make him fully at our mercy. And, oh wow, okay. So now, um, the Princess of Dawn has also died. So now her young five-year-old is the lord well the prince of dawn and his scepter is his region instead of nymeria which is certainly interesting during the battle of the elbow you fiercely charged ahead on horseback directly into the enemy ranks members of your personal gold guard riding beside you tumbled off their horses as enemy arrows found their marks but your charge plowed straight into the enemy skirmishes and your sword ran red with their blood songs will be sung of this day gain 75 prestige perfect because we've got like Literally, fuck all prestige. We've got no prestige at all. And I don't even know why it's so low. It's embarrassingly low. Okay, the Swans have got High Hermitage under siege. So we'll allow them to do that. And we'll march our 7,000 men back to finish off, hopefully, the Martels. We'll let the Swans finish off Lord Dusk. Pierce of Haystack Hall, Peasant Revolt in Stormlands. Okay. <clears throat> uh, give them gold. 50 gold's not too bad. We should have this war over with soon. We've got 7,000 men here. The Red Winds managed to lose that war, so that is a very strong armor. But it is Nymeria leading it, so 
We should be able to crush it now, though, with 7,200 men. If we don't, I'm going to be fuming, and this game really is against us in this playthrough. We need an... Oh, we need a new Master of Whisperers. Oh, no, we've got a Master of Whisperers. Oh. No. Yeah, what's going on here? You're the same Master of Whisperers, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. Let's just go... Okay, you can't scheme. Okay, we'll sort you out in a moment. Let's finish this war first. We do have a disadvantage of a river crossing. But come on, that's not going to make the difference. We've got flipping three times your number near enough. We should easily be able to now put down this little war and claim for our new lands. Yes, it should be a, it should be a landslide victory. A very easy victory. The campaign has been proof that Stefton is clearly not of proper blood. I wish I would never have met him. Oh, he's our rival. Okay, we've gained a new rival. Why? Okay, Vorian seems to be turning a bit sour in his old age. He's turning into a very miserable old prick. And there we go, a great victory, but it didn't really get us a lot of uh, war score. But when we siege these lands back under siege, that will hopefully do it. We need to... There we go, very easy siege. Let's march onto Hellholt and get that back under siege. That little Dusk army's just sort of swamping around Starfall. Not doing a lot. Should we march onto Sunspear? Let's march onto Sunspear instead. Let's just go get the capital of the Martells under siege and finish them off. Hopefully finish them off. How are things going back? Yeah, they're just sieging Starfall. They've not even got enough men to do so. It's a shame that the Swans won't just go and finish them off. We have lost some men on the march though, which is not good. 700 Martell Spears there down in Lemonwood, but shouldn't have to worry about them. Let's just go get some Spear under our control quickly. Your rival, Sir Elias Dusk, has been captured by Lord Davos Swan of the Red Watch and is taken to Stormhelm as prisoner. Okay, perfect. Right. Let's offer him peace then. Enforce demands yes. The revolt against the rule of King Vori and the Sword of the Evening has ended. Right. Can we now... Banish Sir Elias Dust to the Night's Watch. Yes, we will do that. Lose 15 gold, gain 20 pieter. And that's perfect because his son will now be the Lord. And he's still our friend, even though we sent his um, father away. So that's perfect. His heir, Kyle Blackmont. Why is your heir Kyle Blackmont? Okay, so your sister... Ah, you're not married. Okay, we need to arrange a marriage with you then. Why have you not married yet? Do we have anyone? Not really. Patroller Tyrell, who was our brother's wife. He needs to hurry up and get himself a match so that House Dusk doesn't die out. Right. How many defenders does Sunspear have? Not many at all. We've just got to wait a few days until we can siege and a Patroth can get married. Who now? Prince Yorick and Sabara Swan. Yes, send. Let's get that marriage underway. Let's just get Sunspear siege quickly. To the magnificent King Vorian, peace be with you. I accept your suggestion that Prince Yorick and Sabara get married. Perfect. That'll keep that alliance going strong. Prince Yorick, Dana, Sabara, Swan have gotten married. Is because yes, then everyone's concerned. Send us some money, Lord Swan, please. Attempt an assault. Your Grace, Lord Davos, sent you the customary amount, fifty gold. Perfect. Gets our money back up. As my troops ransacked the palace of Sunspear, they uncovered an interesting relic that Septon Vorian had hidden away there. Wonderful news. The seven-pointed star. Interesting. There's no one here of interest, though, to capture, which is a shame. But we'll get it under siege once more, and we'll march back westward. There's a big red wing and swan army hanging around Starfall, so they should be able to take care of that very, very minor Dornish army. I need to keep saying Martell army rather than Dornish, because technically it's not really a Dornish. Well, it could be a Dornish army, isn't it, really? Because they are declaring themselves as Dorn. Uh, my liege, my working night song seems to come to fruition. Perfect. We lose 32 gold. That's where we're losing all our prestige, all these claims. But awesome, we've now got a claim on night song, which is perfect. So we can start going out into the Reach and um, the Stormlands and start collecting the Marcher Lords there. Let's now then fabricate a claim on. Let's fabricate a claim on Horn Hill. Because the Tarleys have gone all weird, haven't they? As we know, they've now worshipped R'hllor. Um, and then his son was Valyrian for some random reason, which I don't know. You know what this game's like. Because like I also noticed, was it in Lemonwood? Was it Lemonwood? God's Grace. It was one of these places down here. Yes. God's Grace is now Lord Coldwater. What the hell they're doing down here and how they managed to get down here, I haven't got the foggiest idea. Right, let's... 
Hmm. Let's march on to Planky Town. Beat that small army. Get it under siege. It's just a case of getting a few provinces under siege now to finish this war off. We uh, need a new commander. Two commanders. Uh, we'll leave them, actually. There's no point getting new commanders because we're going to have a whole host of new lords very soon. So we'll sort out our minor titles and our main titles then as we'll hopefully have some much better choices to pick from. We have our siege leader still as well, which is good. Oh, wow, that didn't take very long, did it? My liege, my working horn hill seems to have come to fruition. Use it. Okay, um, wow. So, like, when you don't want to get these claims, and you're not in a rush, you seem to get them instantly. Then that time when we were waiting for the flipping Prince's Pass, it took about ten years to get it. Which is so annoying. Your Septon Cletus was cornered by a desperate crowd of beggars, okay, and was seriously wounded. Well, that's not good. Let's attempt an assault. Should be an easy assault. No one here of value, though, but it gets us a little bit of war score. Let's march back and get Hellholt under siege. I think that's what we're going to have to do now, just to win this war. And there's a small Martel force there as well to bring down. One child lacking a childhood focus. Arthur Dane. He's attractive. Let's go for Humilita. Where's the, where's the Swan and Redwing army going? Hopefully they're coming to add their numbers to our own so we can get Hellholt under siege. Because if I remember correctly from the last episode, Hellholt was ridiculous ridiculously well defended. I'm sure it had like three and a half, four thousand defenders, which was a bit of a pain, but it's what we're going to have to do now to end this war. We need to take it under siege. Yeah, the Red Winds are following us, so that's good. We'll have a decent amount of men to get it under siege. That's good. It's good news. First, though, let's crush this army in a sandstone. Just finish off what's left of the Martels, which should be very easy to do. And then we can, yeah, 9,700 men when the Swans and Red Winds join their forces to ours. There we go, a great victory in Sandstone. Let's march back onto Hellholt, and yeah, we're at 80%. It's just a case of getting Hellholt under siege now then. Your Grace, I've collected an ankle tax revenue. Awesome, 20 gold. Well, 18 gold, but yeah, it keeps the money up. Your Setting Cleesus reports that Sir Duncan of Nightfall has been humbled by your endless generosities. A job well done. Can we move our Master of Lords again now? Yes, we can. Let's fabricate a claim on... Hmm. Let's go for the ring. We'll go for the ring for now. Just over the border of Starfall into the nice, very fertile, very wealthy old town lands. If we can get some of those, it will really improve our income. And yeah, 3,600 defenders. So it's just... We're just going to strap ourselves in for a very, very long siege. But that will win us the war. We're at seventy-six percent, so they've probably lifted the siege at Sunspear. Your Grace, I've heard, been attending to the wounds of your men at your behest. They seem to be much happier now, hearing that their lord would offer his own maester to aid them. Perfect. Morale of armies is raised. Not that we really need it at the moment. We could have done with that a little bit earlier on, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Never going to uh, moan about that. It ha always happens at the wrong time. But King Harlan the Careless revoked the castle of Drunkard's Tower from John All Wool. Okay, doesn't really concern us. It's a hell of a long way away, that is, isn't it, the north? Come on, we've nearly got this siege out of the way now. Lord Dryland is now known as the Old, and he will soon be our loyal bannerman. Well, maybe not loyal, but he'll soon be our bannerman. Right, uh, easy assault here. Let's go for the assault. There we go. We're at 85%. Another assault. Puts us at 86%. Wah! Come on, what else have we got to do? The Martels will now be the weakest of the three Dornish kings as well, which is good once we get this war out of the way. Let's attempt another assault. And one more to... F wow, there's a lot of provinces, isn't there, in um, Hellholt? We're at 92%. I think Sandstone just had one more siege to do, didn't it? That'll probably win us this war. A son was born to Prince Davos of the Torrentine and Marjorie Redwin named Garrison. Garrison Dane. Um, Yeah, I could go for that. That's not too bad of a name, is it? We really need to start, when we do these playthroughs, thinking of um, nice little themes to do for the children. Silly names, like the uh, Tullys that are all named after um, Muppets, something like that. It's just funner. Right, uh, let's right, let's march to the, Great to the Great Desert, fight that 400 spears, and that should hopefully get us the 100 war score. Your Grace, after much talk, the most of us find another one. May his reign be blessed. We've only just replaced the High Septon. Oh, have we uh, 
Lord Trevor the Drunkard has declared Ghost Hill's War for Prince Tristane's claim on the Red March. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a rebellion going on in the Red March, which is going to be interesting. But it looks like most have gone against um, the Ironwoods as well, so they're probably not going to win that, which could be very interesting. It's going to help us, though, in our conquest for Dawn if they all start splitting up away from each other. I don't care about dragons. I'm fed up of hearing about dragons. Right, let's go into the Red Dunes and get that under siege then. Titus Lannister has had the crown of the rock removed from his treasury. Okay. Your Grace, Titus Lannister has been defeated. I don't really care. It doesn't really concern us all the way down here in Dawn. Or, well, would it have been called Dawn before the Martells brought it together? I don't know. Did it have a different name? Uh, Sir Timian approaches you, my liege. I have a great idea for a monument. Something to raise your cultural status and make the people notice what a great ruler you are. I would require some gold and your patience, and the work would take a year to complete. So be it, surprise me. Yeah, go on then, do something good. Last time I uh, went for that event, it was some like hideous statue which everyone didn't like. But, ah, here we go, 100% offer piece and force demands. Yes. The Torrentine Wharf, the High Lordship of the Wide Way, Lordship of Sandstone, Lordship of Hellhole, Lordship of Kingsgrade, and Lordship of the Prince's Pass has ended. King Vorian of the Torrentine has won. We have successfully seized the Lordship of Hellhole after defeating Prince Marion Martell of Dawn. Shall this territory be attached to the personal domains of Starfall, or shall Lord Lucifer Dryland be confirmed as its rival? Hold? Lord Lucifer can swear fealty to me. We've successfully seized the Lordship of Sandstone after defeating Prince Marin Martell of Dawn. Shall this territory be attached to the personal domain of Starfall? Or shall Lady Mira Cargoyle be confirmed as it's right? Yep, Lady Mira can swear fealty to me as well. What about the Great Desert? I didn't want this Lord. I want to take his title away. Well, then again, we could just change his house instead. Where's our host going? Bring, bring the men home. And what's going on here? Is this... Shouldn't this now be under our uh, control? Strong Clare, Lordship of Starfall, High Lordship of the Torrentine, Kingdom of the Torrentine. His liege is Lord Byron of Wideway. And he should be under our control. Why, um, why are they not under our control? Why is that still under Dornish control? What's going on here? <clears throat> That's not right. We pressed for that claim and for some reason we haven't gained it. Which means we're now going to have to wait a hell of a long time for them to, uh, for our truce to end with... Then again, we don't actually have a truce with you, do we? Because well, I don't think we will. Right. Strong claim on the High Lordship of the White... Yeah, so why, why haven't we... That's very annoying. But we have gained some new lords. We've got Lady Corgoyle now, who's she's got a regular marriage. Why? So now Mark Skimmerton. That's... Oh my god, I hate when the game does such stupid, 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 stupid things. Lord Harmon Corgoyle died. Ah, he was married to our daughter, wasn't he? So House Corgoyle is now going to go extinct, isn't it? Which is very annoying. Yes... Yes, because they none of them have married at matrimonially. That is very, very annoying. So is it your son that's married to... No, who is it that's married? You're married to Lord Timoth of Sandstone. Who is of house? Schmicta. Schmicta. Okay, we do want to change that house. I don't like that. And we're going to change it to... Um, a house that I absolutely loved the name of. Oh, I cannot remember who recommended it. I really apologise. I'll check in a minute, but it was House Warren. And the sigil was a rabbit, which I loved. I don't think I've ever used a rabbit as a sigil before, so that'll look pretty cool. I love rabbits as well. I think the rabbits are around here somewhere, aren't they? Here we go. Oh, which one do we go for? That rabbit or the leaping rabbit? I like the leaping rabbit. What shall we go for for the colour? I can't remember if you suggested a colour. Let me remember. I'll just check and then I can give credit to the guy who recommended it. It was uh, ostentatious. Ostentatious and it was a fan of rabbits. So we wanted a nice little rabbit. A silver rabbit on a blue or purple background. So silver's around here somewhere, isn't it? There we go. We've got a silver rabbit on 
let's have a look at it, what it looks like on blue it looks quite nice purple looks quite nice as well the rabbit's a little bit hard to see on the blue so we'll go for the purple and it matches in with our theme of um using purple for our houses as well there we go house warren perfect we do need to do something though about making sure house corgoyle doesn't die out but i don't know how we're going to do that Margella Warren and Mark Warren. He's the new heir, which is very annoying. We need to change your marriage if we can. Get you a matrimonial marriage. But we'll sort something out there. We'll, we'll sort something out. I'm more annoyed about the fact that we didn't gain at the Prince's Pass. Very annoyed about that. And we're not going to be able to declare war on you either, are we? Because we have no prestige at all. We've got minus 500 prestige. According to Master of Lord Stefan, the small folk of Starf will have started a delightful tradition. Where the small folk from first several villages meet up and dance, feast and pair up for future marriage. By promoting this tradition, Stefan believes that the area will develop a strong local culture that will attract more peasants. A peculiar tradition. I will support it. Lose 40 gold. Um, we gain some prestige though. And our tax modifier goes up. As well as making Starf all prosper. Which is definitely worth doing right we can sort out some of our titles now that needed sorting out we've got a lot to give away right okay dalga queen is still our region so yeah we'll leave her as regent we need another bodyguard we'll go with davos <clears throat> keeper of the swans um let's go with lord dryland to try and get him on side because he doesn't seem to like us very much Master of the Hunt, we will go with um, Lord Blackmont because he doesn't seem to like us very much. High Almanar, let's go with uh, Desiel of High Hermitage, Cupbearer. We'll go with our Sun and Air, Tristan. Paramount Knight, Ooh. we've got Ulwick, a Lord of the Elbow, who's he's a poor fighter, so don't really want to go with him. But there's not really anybody else who's that good of a knight we did have jamie who was a great knight but he obviously died in the last episode which i was a little bit upset about could go with our son he's only a he's only a trained fighter we should be the paramount knight if anyone um yeah we'll just go with yorick why not get our son on side king's justice um hmm master of ships of the torrentine oh we have a master of ships now do we i don't don't remember getting a master of ships Let's just go for Stefton, our rival. He can do that horrible job. Uh, two new commanders. Let's go with Timian, our master of coin. And uh, our brother, why not? Or should we go for our son? Neither of them are very good commanders. We've got a holy warrior down here. Let's go for him, Lord Dryland. Try and get him a little bit more on side. My council. There we have. We now have a master of ships, apparently. I'd rather... Uh, Give that to somebody else, though, if possible. So let's fire this can. Oh, that'll upset him. We'll leave him. He'll probably die soon anyway. But we do have a idle Master of Whisperers. We've not got any factions that we need to worry about, though. So we don't need to send him to that. Let's send him to sabotage the economy in... Let's do it in the Tarly Lands, because we're going to be going to war with them maybe soon. So we'll start putting plans in place over that way. So annoyed that we didn't get this little land. We'll get it soon. We've just got to wait until we have enough prestige. We're going to have to try and gain some prestige somehow. I don't know how. We're going to have to try something to do. We could propose a foreign tour to our son, Prince Davos. What will that achieve? Offer to fund a tour to foreign lands for Prince Davos so he become learned and become a better man. Yeah, let's do that. Let's propose a foreign tour for Davos. Your son Davos seemed excited at your proposal and has agreed to undertake a tour of foreign lands in the name of House Dane. He will travel for a number of months using your coin to charter a ship that will depart from Starfall in the coming days. And we gain 25 prestige from that. It's only 50 gold as well, so that's not too bad. Put our gold and turn it into prestige. We should make money as well while we're at peace. So yes, let's do that. Send him and Lady Redwin on a foreign tour. What else can we do? Um, entry. What? Well, not entry, but what can we do to try and get that prestige improved? Because we've got terrible prestige. Um, search for a smith and try and have something made. We could do that. Um, employ a new courtier. Establish a household gob. That costs quite a bit of money. Hold a feast. 
Yeah, let's hold a feast. That doesn't cost too much. All my vassals will be there and we'll probably gain a decent amount of prestige for doing that as well, which will make it worthwhile. But we'll end today's episode here for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I really do appreciate it. We've managed to near enough double our land. We would have been, we would have tripled our land if it weren't for whatever's gone wrong with Sturm, the St St uh, Kingdom of St uh, Scar. I'm getting all mixed up, but yeah, for the Prince's Pass and such, Skyreach. But never mind, we'll be able to take them soon once we get the prestige. And we've also got the claim in the Tarly Land and in Night Song, so we'll press those once we do get the prince's pass thank you so much for the support as always please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below and hopefully i'll see you all soon for the next episode